Welcome back to another learning series with Mr. Knight. Today we're going to look at cell division, particularly mitosis. When you get a cut or a damaged part of your body, those cells will be repairing by simply making new cells and you notice that you become almost new again. While growing from a very smaller size to a larger version of yourself, you make new cells to become larger. And that could happen in any organism, whether plant or animals. Now, it therefore means that mitosis is responsible for growth, development, and repair. Now, as to remind you, is that cells have nucleus. And in nucleus, you have some thread-like structures called chromosomes. Very important for you to note or remember is that chromosomes can be represented in two ways. You have one version on your left and another version on your right. Now, very important for you to note is that chromosomes are counted based on the number of centromeres. So, on your left, there is a centromere, and on your right, there is also a centromere. However, the difference is, on your left, you only have one chromatid. On your right, you have two chromatids. And because the chromatids are the same, we call them sister chromatids. Importantly, is that the chromatids they have two arms you have a short arm which is called the p arm and you have a longer arm which is called the q arm easy way to remember it as a q as an extra tail compared to the p so it's longer if you should stretch it so it's representing the long the longer arm now let's do a learning check on your left how many chromosomes and how many chromatids are you seeing? Absolutely right. So there are four centromeres, so therefore must be four chromosomes and four chromatids. Beautiful. On your right, how many chromosomes and how many chromatids? You are seeing four centromeres, so that means four chromatids, four chromosomes, and if you notice each chromosome has two chromatids therefore is eight chromatids beautifully done awesome job now mitosis mitosis is a process of cell division where one cell which is called a parent cell divides to produce two identical cells which are called daughter cells very important to note is that all the cells, they are equal in terms of the number of chromosomes. So the parent cell will be equal to the daughter cells. Also, the daughter cells will also be equal to each other. So all the cells will have the same number of chromosomes. Now, the main idea of mitosis is simply one cell will make in two identical cells. But imagine moving from one cell to two identical cells which are equal to themselves and to the original cell. The parts in the cell must first duplicate, which we call replication. So if you start from this, from four chromatids and four chromosomes, then everything must double. And then once you divide that by two, you will eventually result in two equivalent cells. Okay, so when they split or divide, the cells will be equal. So that's the main idea. That's actually a summary of mitosis. But however, in the process in between, there are some things happening. So let's get into it. Now, my, there are some facts about mitosis that you need to remember. And it's very important for you to know that in mitosis, there's only one cell division known as PMAT, and that's a nuclear division. The daughter cells, they have the same number of chromosomes as the parent cells and also to themselves. Only two identical daughter cells are produced. 
Now the phases of mitosis, which are PMAT, and I want you to notice that mitosis is only PMAT. Now there's a pre-mitosis mitosis stage, and that is known as the interphase. So pre-mitosis, you have the interphase. Post-mitosis, which means after mitosis, you have what they call a cytokinesis. And so easy way to remember all these phases and stages, it simply means invasion. Please make army time counts. So it's I, P, M, A, T, C. Very important to note again is that in the interphase, which is pre-mitosis, there's some, there's no division of a cell taking place, absolutely no division taking place before mitosis. Then you have a nuclear division that is by mitosis. And then after mitosis, the, there is a cytoplasmic division known as the cytokinesis, all right, which means the cytoplasm is dividing. So remember again, invasion, please make army time counts. Now, in the interphase, there is no cellular division, as we mentioned before. However, there is a replication of the cell parts taking place, which means everything in the cell will duplicate. So if you started out with four chromosomes and four chromatids, imagine you'll get eight chromatids by the end of the interphase. Now, in the prophase, which is very important to note, that the chromosomes, they will condense, which means they become thicker, and they will become visible. At this stage, the nuclear membrane will start to break down. So if you notice the nucleus, it starts to break down. Very important to note is that you have a structure known as, structures known as centrioles, and the centrioles they are right angles to each other and attached to the centrioles you will have what they call spindle fiber the centrioles will eventually start to move towards opposite side of a pole or opposite sides of the cell or opposite poles of a cell during the prophase you're going to see the importance of these spindle fiber and the centriole in a few seconds now in the metaphase and i want to think about metaphase as being middle the m for middle now the chromosomes will align in the middle along what they call a metaphase plate in a single file so it's very important to note that the chromosomes they will be aligned in a single file along this plate that is represented by the green broken line as the metaphase plate now the importance of the spindle fiber and the centriole and when you think about the centrioles as anchors and the spindle fibers as rope or chains so remember now the nucleus is gone and if the nucleus is gone then the chromosomes need to be anchored in a specific position and so if they are pulling on equal sides um, on both sides equally then the chromosomes will be in the exact middle of the cell uh, let's go to the other phase, which is known as the anaphase. Now, think about the A as being antisocial, right? So, if you're antisocial, you want to move away from other, pe other persons, right? And so, in this stage, the sister chromatids move to opposite poles or opposite sides of the cell. And how this is happening is simple this. The spindle fibers, they become shorter and thicker. So each spindle fiber shortens and thickens. And notice it, if they are getting shorter, just thinking about the anchors there as being reinforcement and the ropes or chain are pulling in because they're getting shorter and shorter, then the chromatids will move to opposite sides or opposite poles of the cell. For the other phase, which is known as the telophase, and you can think about the T as being teleporting, and if you want to teleport or do you remember the flash and you go into that circular chamber and you run really fast so you, and you move into different dimension so the same thing is happening here pretty much you're going to teleport and so the nuclear membrane will reform and the purpose for this is to make sure that these chromatids that are on opposite side of the cells they will be contained on that side 
if there was no nuclear membrane, everything will be scattered, confused, and mix up all over the cell, which the cell is preventing that from happening because the cell wants to maintain order. And so what we have forming now is the cleavage furrow. And so the cleavage furrow is the point where the cytoplasm will start to divide. And so after telophase, you will have the cytokinesis. And the cytokinesis, remember, it is the cytoplasm of a cell divides and form two identical cells. So do you remember the original cell we started out with? Four chromatids, four chromosomes. So now we have two of them being exactly the same in terms of number as the original parent cell. Now to finish this off, now in human beings, we have the original cell which we have 46 chromosomes in, our, in each cell or we have what they call 23 pairs of chromosomes. The numbers will duplicate as in interphase and when we say duplication of numbers at this point we're talking about the chromatid numbers okay so the numbers of chromatids and then the numbers will be maintained in terms of chromatids however in the telophase because they're going the opposite side this number divides into two and then we have two equal cells as the original cell these numbers I'll, i will be explaining in another lesson so at this time I want you to stay connected, keep learning, and look out for more videos like this simply by just subscribing. See you in the next lesson.